technical analysis remains one of the most contentious tools that investors can use for deciding whether shares are worth trading. While many of these indicators may appear to work well on larger, more liquid stocks, people have questioned the suitability of using it to value small and medium capitalization shares. We're looking at whether or not technical analysis works, particularly in light of the illiquidity that you're looking at for smaller companies. Joining me at the desk, Tandi Sizwe Mahluchana, the Finwig Deputy Editor, still with us. Viv Govinda, Senior Analyst at Vanani Private Clients. And we've also got Franz de Klerk, Independent Technical Analyst, joining us on the line. Very quickly, Mark, why has this question come up? Yeah, well, it's very interesting. At the end of last year, Keith McLaughlin, he's one of small cap fundamental analysts, wrote uh, uh, quite a content little piece about how to value and how to dis how to get involved in small cap investing and he came up and one of the lines that he said was small cap technical analysis doesn't work on small cap shares mm -hmm. um, so just throw it out the window and we received quite a lot of hate mail about it and I forwarded it on to Keith just to let it go and, and I mean essentially what happened what was, was his response well I mean uh, Keith I, I think everybody's entitled to their own opinion you know mm -hmm. you, everyone's got a me methodology to which they work but the one of the things that was very interesting was you know the, the data that would come back so one of the uh, one of the one of the guys who wrote in to us said yes but on a 27 day moving average that'll do this and on a 133 day and you wonder like where does 27 or 133 days come from it's, it's almost like you know I in hindsight it'll always be a 2020 it will always be 2020 you can't go and apply a lot of these trading tools mm -hmm. on just to make a graph fit a picture and say yes but now it works mm -hmm. so so there we go that was uh, he said hate mail and it was a uh, sparked a lot of debate um, the your your theory right now when it comes to a uh, small cap analysis do you use technical technical graphs for them it depends what you define as technical I mean if you look at for instance some of the you know the momentum stuff etc when it comes to the smaller cap stuff it doesn't work the reason being volume is not there yeah. without the volume there to actually as any technical analysis say volume confirms it Without the volume there, uh, especially with these smaller cap stocks, you can find some days when they're using huge volumes and some weeks when they do nothing, literally. Mm -hmm. And without that volume confirming what's happening, you don't know exactly what's going to be done. But on the other hand, if you look at basically breakouts, uh, then a technical analysis uh, approach, let us say, when it comes to a breakout in a small cap share could be quite useful because yeah. often small cap shares to d tend to do these gigantic moves and pieces of news come into the market. But those pieces of news may not always be in the mainstream media. They may be known to a few insiders, let us say. And those kind of things are possible to spot with technical analysis if you look at massive changes in volume and breakouts. And then you could possibly see a trend happening. But a lot of the tools that we do talk about, I mean, I'd, I would say, for instance, a lot of the moving averages stuff, etc., we might not be able to rely on them to a certain extent because without the volume to control from it. You don't know what exactly is pushing things. There are so many day traders and intraday traders who really influence the market movements. And as you say, we've got fundamental reports coming through twice a year from companies showing us the numbers in mm. South Africa. And uh, in between that, a lot happens to stocks. I mean, uh, Tanda Sizwe, your thoughts right now on uh, the, the value of technical analysis to traders? Look, I, I think uh, technical analysis is open to interpretation. I think you can have two technical analysts looking at one graph and they might come with completely different stories. Um, so I do think that it does contain a bit of biasness. For example, if you are a, a bullish uh, analyst on a, on, a, on a certain stock, that bullishness will be overshadowed in your graph, in your, in your technical analysis. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do think that it does not serve a hell of a lot of purple screen. <laughs> um, well, that's your, I mean, opinion. opinion Obviously, yeah. we've got uh, Franz de Klerk joining us, who is a technical analyst. Uh, so, Franz, uh, take us through your thoughts right now on the appropriateness of technical technical analysis. Uh, but let's uh, first take a look at like a big cap stock like BHP Billiton. Um, Samantha, I've sent you the graph, through, and I'm not in front of a TV, so I hope you've put it on now. Um, the, the big question is always if, if, if fundamentals work and, and if you can combine it with technical analysis. Now, if you look at Billiton, most of us will know that it's a top company with excellent management, with an excellent business model, and you would like to accumulate that share over time into a portfolio. Now, some of the, the guys will say, but you can just go ahead and you just accumulate as you get the money. Now, where technical analysis is coming into play here, is that if you use a simple trend line all the way from 2003 right across to 2013, it will show you that bulletin is surely advancing in price. And I, I've put some arrows in where there's some ideal accumulation opportunities happening onto that graph. And the main reason being any graph, and, and what we must usually remember about technical analysis, 
is that we believe that the line chart or a bar chart or a candlestick chart, any one of those charts actually reflects the informed money. It's what the guy that's bigger than myself and you that wants to buy a share knows more than us. And what happens over time is usually if you look at the trend line that that, the share will go up, run away from that, and then come back all the way to come and test it. And that creates ideal well, trading opportunities and even accumulation opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I draw that one resistance line in right across there close to 2009. And all of us thought then that everything is 100% fine with the commodity sector and nothing can go wrong. And suddenly the market started to sell off. And that was the ideal place either to stop accumulating or even sell your share. And what that comes to is that you can use technicals. And I always say that fundamental guys are fantastic to call a bottom. Why? Because they can work out the figures and they can look at the books. But the technical guys are usually better in calling a top. And the reason being, they can see when the clever money or the informed money is slowly but surely leaving that stock. And, and usually that's presented by a lower eye. Mm -hmm. And I believe there is a place for two. But for me, after many years, I've decided and I've learned that you must combine the two. You, you cannot be just a fundamentalist or you cannot be just a technical analyst. You must combine the two and then see if you can time the market a little bit better and that's always not that easy to do. Yeah. I mean, we were looking at trend lines there and we were seeing where, uh, you know, indicated when it starts coming back, it's a good opportunity to sell and once again where the opportunity is to buy. Is that where you see value in technical yeah. analysis? Yeah. Well, one thing France mentioned there that was interesting is that he's trying to discern the intentions of the bigger investors out there. With a large cap like BHP Bulletin, yes, you pretty much have an idea with the big investors out there. It's going to be the banks, the big, ins the big pension funds, and so on. Those are the smart guys. For a smaller cap stock, it's some, not so it will serve certain. Sometimes it could be management that's trying to basically support something at a certain level. Sometimes it could be one large investor out there that wants, for whatever reason of his own, uh, to desire to support certain things. So uh, a case in point would be a stock like, for instance, Simmers a few years ago. Yeah. And where you had, uh, I, I remember our traders used to love it because no matter what it did in the day, it always ended up to a certain range. Why? Because there was a large investor out there, which mm -hmm. later led to be some kind of issue. But, but that investor had to do, had to have the stock above a certain point due to his margin calls. Yeah. And every day he would And everyone that. knew that. And everyone knew that. Yeah. But there are some small stocks out there for whatever reason, may it be some, in, some management deal happening or some kind of thing that you don't know about. You don't know who the buyer is, and unlike a big cap stock, you may be confused by what's happening by a smaller cap stock because of uh, price movements. We're hitting pause in the conversation. We're going to have a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to delve back into this uh, topic and uh, take a look at one of the small cap stocks like Bell, which is an interesting one to look at, and whether technical analysis then applies to a stock like that. Do stay tuned.